I want to talk about the Oscar Pistorius trial and some of the misconceptions that people have about it. Let's first start about premeditated murder. If he had decided one minute before killing her that he was going to kill her, that's enough to show premeditation. Uh, premeditation can be formed in the twinkling of an eye. No. Not in South Africa. The standard for premeditated murder is much higher than what is required in the U.S. Well, there's no jury, Ronan. It's just a judge. Is that it doesn't seem like he has a jury. We only have a judge here. Kind of. Jury trials were replaced with assessors. Assessors are often seen, but never heard. In fact, the only person they will talk to about court proceedings is the judge. Assessors sit alongside the judge and help the judge try the case. They are usually lawyers or they possess some sort of skill that the judge feels is useful, such as having an accountant in a fraud case. Um, in the High Court, the judge has discretion on whether to appoint assessors. They will usually be appointed if the charges are serious or if it's a high-profile case. Assessors take an oath, administered by the judge, that they will give a true verdict based on the evidence presented in court. And on matters of fact, the assessors can overrule the judge because they all have an equal vote, but legal issues are left to the judge. Over the years, a number of reasons have been advanced as to why South Africa doesn't use juries. The main one is that jury trials are expensive and cumbersome. Juries also don't have to give reasons for their verdict, whereas judges and assessors do. But the main reason that South Africa doesn't have juries is the same reason it doesn't have lay surgeons operating on people or lay engineers building bridges. It is believed that a judge and assessors are better equipped to decide the innocence or guilt of a person because of their legal training. And given the huge interest in this case, Oscar would not have received a fair trial if he was tried by a jury of his South African peers. The reason why people find this trial so confusing was that many US news networks consulted American lawyers who had no background or experience in South African law. Some legal expertise on this trial. We're going to turn to our super smart daily panel. What are the key differences between the U.S. and South African legal systems that... that How, uh, what is the burden of proof in a South African courtroom? I mean, look, with the greatest of respect, what the fuck do they know? I'm sure these people are brilliant lawyers, but they know nothing about South African law. Oscar Pistorius was indicted for the murder of his girlfriend, Reva Stenkamp. He faced two counts of discharging a firearm in a public place and a third count relating to the unlawful possession of ammunition belonging to his father. Let us take a look at Oscar's version of events on the night of the shooting. What you're looking at is a floor plan of Oscar Pistorius' bedroom and ensuite bathroom. I've recreated it just to show the sequence of events. So, on Val the early hours of Valentine's Day morning, Oscar Pistorius was sleeping on the left-hand side of the bed and Reva Steenkamp was sleeping on the right-hand side of the bed. Um, sometime in the morning, Oscar Pistorius got up to the balcony to take out, uh, pick up some fans that he'd left on the balcony. The door was wide open. He came back inside and he got to about here. And then he heard a noise coming from the bathroom. At this point he thought it was an intruder, so he goes to, the, to his bed, takes his gun that he keeps under the bed, and then proceeds on his stumps down this passageway and then to the bathroom. He then gets to the bathroom and he hears another noise. And he then fires four shots into this toilet cubicle where Reva Steenkamp was. And these shots ended up killing her. To make this trial a bit easier to understand, I'm going to give you some background on South African criminal law that is relevant to this case. South Africa doesn't have an offence of premeditated murder. We simply have murder and there are three types of criminal intent which are sufficient for a murder conviction. The three forms of intent are dolus directus, direct intent, where you directly intend to perform the criminal act, dolus indirectus, indirect intent, where the criminal act wasn't your main aim but you had to carry it out to fulfil your main purpose, for example having to kidnap a bank employee and forcing that employee to open the vault. And finally, but most critical to this case, dolus eventualis, or intention by foresight. This form of intent has two requirements. One is that you must subjectively foresee that the act will have an unlawful result. And secondly, you must reconcile yourself to that possibility occurring and continue regardless. 
The two main possible convictions that Oscar faced were murder and culpable homicide. Murder is defined as the unlawful and intentional causing of the death of another human being, whereas culpable homicide is defined as the unlawful negligent causing of the death of, a number, uh, of another human being. This is similar to manslaughter. What distinguishes murder from culpable homicide is intention. Now we move on to the laws on gun ownership and private defence, or self-defence as it's known in layman's terms. In order to rely on private defence, there must be an unlawful attack against a legal interest, such as your life or property, that is imminent or has commenced, but not completed. Your defence must be directed at the attacker, it must be necessary and reasonable. In South Africa, legal gun ownership is not a right. It is strictly controlled. You have to apply for a weapon. You have to justify why you need one. You need to undergo training and you need to undergo competency tests. Part of the competency, part of the competency test deals with when you may lawfully use a firearm. Oscar Pistorius took that test when applying for his firearm. The court was then told Pistorius had passed a competency exam about the acceptable use of a firearm. Taken from Oscar Pistorius's actual test, Sean Renz read aloud questions relating to a break-in scenario, followed by the athlete's written answers. There is no security gate between you and the burglars, and they turn around and both are armed. One with a knife and the other with a firearm in their hands and they advance towards you. Can you discharge a firearm at them because you fear for your life? And he answered? Yes, my lady. Let's deal with question number six. Ex explain the legal requirements when using lethal force or private for private or self-defense. And the accused wrote, in his, wrote the answer himself. Am I correct? Correct. And he, what did he write? Attack must be against you. The, it must be unlawful. And it must be against a person. So you see, Oscar Pistorius knew what the law said when he fired those shots that morning. In the judgment, the court found that the state's evidence against Oscar Pistorius was largely circumstantial. The witnesses who testified about hearing noises turned out to be unreliable when their version was tested against the cell phone records. And the WhatsApp messages between Oscar and Reva could not be seen as evidence of either a good or a bad relationship. And although the court felt that Oscar Pistorius was a terrible witness, the evidence tipped the scales in favour of Oscar's version of events. His defence counsel were able to construct a good timeline that raised reasonable doubt about the state's case. On the charge of murder, the court found that there wasn't any evidence to prove premeditated murder, let alone murder with direct intent or dolus directus. On murder with the intent in the form of dolus eventualis, they found that he wasn't guilty because he did not know that Reva was behind the door. What the court did find was that Oscar was negligent. His actions were not that of a reasonable person. On his own version of events, he armed himself with a loaded firearm and proceeded to go confront the perceived threat without taking any measures to guard against the possibility of death occurring. He was found guilty on count three for, char for discharging of a weapon at Tasha's restaurant. Counts two and four, he was found not guilty and acquitted. And a month later, he was sentenced. Months. Uh, Oscar Pistorius, just in the last few minutes, sentenced to five years in prison for the culpable homicide in the killing of Reva Steenkamp. The state then appealed the matter. The issue centered on the legal issue of dolus eventualis or intention by foresight. This was the issue that South African legal experts questioned. Most ex experts agreed with the rest of the court's findings. The judge allowed the appeal to proceed. Many people thought that this was double jeopardy, but it didn't apply in this case. For the record, double jeopardy is prohibited in, in the South African constitution. In South Africa, the state can appeal on questions of law, a position that Canada shares. 
The appeal was heard in November 2015 in front of a panel of five judges where both the state and the defence put forward their respective arguments. Again, this was broadcast live. The judgment was delivered in December. In December 2015, the court handed down judgment. They unanimously, they unanimously found that Oscar Pistorius was guilty of murder. The trial court had made an error in law by not taking into account all the evidence, in this case the evidence of a ballistic expert. To quote from the judgment, Captain McGinnis testified that the black talon ammunition the accused had used was specifically designed for the purpose of self-defense. It would penetrate a wooden door without disintegrating, but would mushroom on st striking a soft, moist target such as human flesh, causing devastating wounds to any person who might be hit. As a matter of common sense, at the time the fatal shots were fired, the possibility of death of the person behind the door was clearly an obvious result, and in firing not one but four shots, such a result became even more likely. But that is exactly what the accused did. A court, blessed with the wisdom of hindsight, should always be cautious of determining that because an accused ought to have foreseen this uh, consequence, he or she must have done so. But in the present case, that inference is irresistible. A person is far more likely to foresee the possibility of death occurring where the weapon used is a lethal firearm. In these circumstances, I have no doubt that in firing the fatal shots the accused must have foreseen, and therefore did foresee that whoever was behind the toilet door might die, but reconciled himself to that event occurring and gamble with that person's life. This constituted dolus eventualis on his part, and the identity of his victim is irrelevant to his guilt. Before closing, it is necessary to make a final comment. The trial was conducted in the glare of international tension and the focus of television cameras, which must have added to the inherently heavy rigours that are brought to bear upon trial courts in conducting lengthy and complicated trials. The trial judge conducted the hearing with a degree of dignity and patience that is a credit to the judiciary. The fact that this court has determined that certain mistakes were made should not be seen as an adverse comment upon her competence and ability. The fact is that different judges reach di different conclusions and in the light of an appeal structure, those of the appellate court prevail. But the fact that the appeal has succeeded is not to be regarded as a slight upon the trial judge, who is to be congratulated for the manner in which she conducted the proceedings. A constitutional court ruling means that the Supreme Court of Appeal must send the matter back to the original judge for resentencing. In 2016, a sentencing hearing was held and Oscar was then sentenced to six years in prison.